Welcome back to MCFI's Nutrition Cooking Demos. My name is Sharon Copeland and I'm the Nutrition Education Coordinator. Today we're going to be talking about how to get the most out of your produce purchases. We're going to be featuring tomatoes, broccoli, and onions today as these are popular produce items that are purchased and we're going to start with our tomatoes. So today we have our Roma tomatoes in front of us. These were gotten, we were purchased from Aldi today. Um, where you can find these are pretty much most markets and grocery stores. Um, and the things that go for these tomatoes pretty much go for every type, like beefsteak tomatoes or heirloom tomatoes. So whenever you have unripe tomatoes, like orange or green tomatoes, you want to be able to store those in a dry space, normally away from sunlight, like direct sunlight, to be able to get them to ripen better. If you store unripe tomatoes in the refrigerator or where so they're kind of cold, sometimes they overripen really fast or they don't develop the best way for the best taste. So you want to be able to keep those unripe tomatoes in a dry space, maybe about room temperature, um, away from direct sunlight for a couple of days, and then they'll ripen then. Once you have ripe tomatoes, you want to choose tomatoes that are bright red, and they're kind of semi-firm. Like this one is kind of semi-firm. If it's too mushy or too soft, it might be overripe. Those are perfect for sauces or sauces, but they're not great for keeping for a long time. So whenever you go to cut into a ripe tomato, you always want to notice that there's going to be a little bit of pushback. It's going to be a little bit firm and crisp. That's how you know you have a perfectly ripe tomato. And it's going to be juicy, looking like these in front of me. So these are just some examples of some fresh tomatoes. These are going to keep in the refrigerator after being cut for about two to three days. You can keep them in a plastic sealed container or in plastic wrap after they've been cut. So the best way to maximize your meals with your tomatoes are to plan to use them within five days of purchase or of them being ripe. So that would look like if you had beefsteak tomatoes, which are a larger variety than these. They're perfect for using on sandwiches. You can cut those, put them down to sandwich slices, and they'll be great to cover the whole sandwich area. Um, if you have some like these that are Roma tomatoes, like I said before, they're perfect in salsa or sauces, like making great spaghetti. All right, so on to broccoli, how to make the most out of your broccoli. So when to buy it, right? We always wanna buy our broccoli kind of fresh. It's gonna be pretty firm. So if you notice that it's bright green or very healthy green, that's a great sign that your broccoli is fresh. Sometimes though, you will see a little bit of the purple around the tops of your broccoli. And you'll wanna notice that they're kind of closed. The flowers are closed. If you see purple, that's perfectly fine. And if your flowers are closed, that's actually a sign that it's really fresh. So this is some great broccoli to be able to keep in your house. If you notice that you have longer stems on your broccoli, those are perfect for putting in soups or using as fillers for other recipes. So whenever you see browning on your broccoli or anything that looks like white hairs on the top, that's when you want to discard it because that's a good chance that it could be filled with mold or it's probably bad. You don't want to take a chance on that. So always look for bright green, a little bit of purple, and you want to be pretty firm with no white hairs on top. So when it comes to storing your broccoli, you want to make sure that it's stored in a ventilated area. If you're going to use something like a plastic bag or any type of plastic, you don't want it to be wrapped too tight. You want to put it in loosely, just like this, and seal it up. Now that broccoli is good to go. If you decide that you want to use a different method, like making a broccoli um, bouquet, you can take your broccoli that has a shorter stem like this, maybe cut it in the middle so that way you have a little bit more room for the broccoli, and place it with water at the bottom. This is better for longer stems. Obviously this is a shorter stem broccoli, so you might have to put more water at the bottom to be able to touch the bottom of the broccoli itself. But the goal at the end of the day is to submerge at least an inch or two worth of the broccoli at the bottom and then place it in the refrigerator. Whenever you're using broccoli, you wanna be able to use it for multiple uses, right? So oftentimes we find ourselves taking the tops of the broccoli, sauteing it, um, cooking it, frying it, putting it in different foods, right? Perfect for whenever you need broccoli for florets, but 
If you're using the base of the broccoli, that's where we want to make our soups, our broths, and get the most out of different types of recipes that need that broccoli flavor, but not as much of the chunky top. All right, so with that being said, you want to plan to be able to use this broccoli for about three to five days or up to six days after purchasing it fresh. That way you can get the most out of it. And know that broccoli is a great benefit for your chest health too, and for health like supporting your body's natural detox systems. So there's a lot of good benefits that come with eating broccoli, and I hope that you buy them soon. All right, so we're on to our last vegetable for today, and that would be onions. So a lot of people use onions in a variety of different dishes, but today we're gonna be talking about the same thing, when to use them, where to buy them, and how to make the most out of them. So usually, whenever you're looking for onions, you wanna look for smooth onions that are firm with no black or like smushy areas. So like this is more of your ideal onion. It's really round, really firm. It doesn't have too many indentations, and it looks fresh and ready to go. This onion, he's probably been through a couple of things here. He looks like he's probably been sat on the ground because he has some black spotches, maybe a little bit of growth there. So you wanna avoid onions like this. I know oftentimes in produce they tell you that you can cut off pieces, but when it comes to onions, I wouldn't necessarily risk cutting it off and trying to use the rest. So whenever you're storing onions, you wanna store them whenever they're whole and maybe in a bag in a cool, dark, and well-ventilated area. A lot of people make the mistake of storing them around potatoes, but you want to actually keep your potatoes and your onions separate. Reason being is because potatoes and onions actually make each other go ripe faster by the gas that they release as they're aging. So you want to avoid keeping your produce going bad by separating those and maybe keeping them in two separate baskets and opposite sides of your pantry or in two different areas completely. Because of the rate of onions, they kind of take a little bit longer to go bad. So sometimes, depending if you get really fresh onions, they can last for about two to three weeks up in your pantry. Because of this, you wanna make sure that you use your onions within two weeks of purchasing to get the best flavor out of them. You wanna avoid um, trying to use them really close to their expiration date as they can make your food taste sour. Um, whenever you have already cut onions, like this one, you wanna be able to store them in a plastic bag as shown before. So if you cut them up in slices, you wanna be able to put it in a plastic bag or you can put it in a plastic sealed container, especially if the onions are diced. After about two to three days, those onions will go bad though. So you wanna be able to plan to use those relatively fast. Um, All together though, onions are great for adding flavor to dishes by seasoning them. You can bake them in with your main dishes or you can simply um, create a delicious French onion soup. These onions are perfect for a fridge onion soup. And the cool thing about onions is that they're known to cool inflammation and protects against joint damage. So if you're a person that you may have, you know, achy joints or you might have some arthritis, eating onions and consuming onions are going to be helpful and beneficial for you. So some additional tips before we go, I just wanna remind everyone to take advantage of the opportunities that you have to access fresh produce. Look for sales on in-season produce. At the time of this recording, there are like blueberries and peaches on sale at Aldi or cucumbers and grapes on sale at Woodman's. Like these different places that people frequently shop, they always have in-season sales. So look out for those. In the Milwaukee area, I wanna let you know that Outpost has launched their Produce to the People initiative, and that gives food share recipients 50% off their produce. This is a collaboration between Hunger Task Force and Outpost, so feel free to look that up and take full advantage of it. With the rising cost of food, now is the time to use every resource available to make the most out of your produce. So between purchasing produce at a discount and using it in multiple uses throughout the week, that's gonna be able to make the most out of your purchases. Thank you for having us today and thank you for watching today and I'll see you guys next time.